Hey guys, Mike Builds, welcome back to another awesome video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys the upgrade process I went through to go from my EG4 6000 XP power cart that we built previously to this ginormous Flex Boss 21, 60 kilowatt hours of batteries, tons of outlets, its own breaker panel. We're also back feeding the house with it, so the whole house is running on it right now. This is the second iteration of the setup. The first ever iteration I built in a 48 volt setup was a EG4 6500 EX. I then upgraded to the EG4 6000 XP that gave me split phase output. So I was able to run 240 volt appliances. However, I think I've gotten to point to where now I've actually outgrown this because my goal now is to be able to run the whole house. It's been extremely reliable. It's literally never been shut off until just now when I turned it off. I guess we're gonna get started. Because I've already powered this down, I went ahead and connected that mini split to our portable cart setup. So we're just gonna use this for now. I might hook another battery up, but that's what's gonna AC the house. Luckily the weather outside is real, not very hot. So it should have no problem cooling the house. The only other load I really need to switch over that's very important is the refrigerator. So those two loads will be running off the small power cart while we get this transition done. And I hopefully will get this done in maybe two or three days. Today's Friday, it's Friday evening. So hopefully by Sunday we'll have either the setup fully running or mostly ready to go. I will say the cart idea was cool. And if you guys look, it is very easy to move around. I mean, this is a about 25 kilowatt hours rolling around on this cart right now. So I don't know, kind of sad to take it apart, honestly. But I am ready to move on and make this setup a lot better and a lot more permanent for the future. All right, so here's the space that we're gonna mount our plywood to the wall. The reason I wanna put a piece of plywood to the wall is that when we go to mount all our boxes and our outlets and our bus bars and everything, I'm not putting a thousand little holes in the wall. I'll just put a couple big screws in the plywood to hold it to the wall and the studs. That way it'll support the weight and all that good stuff. And then everything else can be mounted to that and it'll look really good. All right, we got the wall mount on the wall. Now I gotta be able to lift the inverter up and put it on that. I put it pretty high up that we have tons of space on the bottom in order to put our bus bars, batteries, distribution boxes, all that good stuff. Now I'm sure some people are wondering why I didn't put a cement or hardy backer behind this. Main reason is I didn't wanna deal with the dust. A lot of that cement board produces really, really nasty dust whenever you work with it. And I'm just kind of afraid to have it here unexposed because if you ever rub against it or produce some sort of dust, the dust is really bad that it puts off. I figure straight to wood would be just fine. If the inverter ever got hot enough to scorch the wood, I think you have other issues, but I've seen a ton of other people's setups where they put them directly on pieces of wood, including my old setup, and I never had an issue with it. Plus, I'm very keen on fire safety as well. I do keep all that in mind, so just wanted to kind of address that because I'm sure some people are gonna ask. I did look into it, and we could always go back and add it later if for some reason I see a good reason to do so, but anyways, that's the reason we're going just straight to the plywood. I don't know if I'm gonna be strong enough to lift the inverter up. I'm gonna try my best without hurting myself, so it might be kind of a poop show. Now that we got the inverter mounted on the wall, we need to connect our critical loads panel. So I went and scooped another breaker box. This is the critical loads printer I went with. It's a 14 space, 24 circuit, 125 amps. So it's plenty of power for what we're using it for. Got a nice cover. And I am gonna actually end up bonding the neutral and the ground in the panel because the inverter doesn't make its own neutral ground bonding. But this thing looks pretty nice. We're gonna have our two hots, our neutral ground right there coming in from the top. I do need to put a main disconnect breaker. So that's the only thing I need to add to this box. It did also come with some extra breakers as well. It actually came with some breakers right out of the box. So that's cool as well. And that's it. We're probably gonna mount this guy, preferably somewhere right here. That way it's up and out of the way and we can route all the wiring from the inverter. We can come out of the output, out of this knockout, maybe go toward the wall and maybe just snake it underneath up into our loads panel. Actually, if I'm looking at this electrical panel correctly, it says here back feed main breaker this slide. So I think I can actually install a backfeed breaker right here as our main input breaker from the inverter. So I'll probably put like a 60 amp breaker. I don't ever plan on pulling more than that ever out of the inverter. So if we go that route, it'll actually work out really good. So that'll become our input breaker and then we'll have all our output breakers here as well. Probably put it right about there. That looks good. I doubt I'm actually gonna need that many spaces, but we have plenty of room to expand and grow this if we need to. Since the inverter is so powerful, I wanna make sure we have plenty of breaker box 
to go along with what we could potentially hook up to this. All right, guys, I just got back from the electrical supply house and Lowe's. So I went and bought a bunch of 6.3 Romax. This is gonna be to feed the house panel. I also have some four gauge THHN wire. This is gonna go from the inverter to our critical loads panel. I also bought a bunch of new outlets. We got some nice 20 amp heavy duty outlets with all the boxes, the breakers and everything. So one thing guys, I want y'all to remember, and I've heard a lot of other people mention this, whenever you guys are specking out your system, no matter what you're building, make sure y'all put a good chunk of change aside for all the plugs, outlets, wire, breakers, boxes, all that stuff. Cause all that stuff adds up pretty quickly. And this is already quite a bit of money sitting right here. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're specking your system out, wire is expensive, all the good electrical safe components you want to use that are beefy. They're going to cost a little bit of money. So just kind of keep that in mind, but we should have everything we need minus conduit. I don't know how much conduit I need to buy, but I did buy some kind of generic flexible conduit to go and wire our plug boxes. I just don't have the Conway yet to go from the inverter to the critical loads panel. So I do got to figure all that out still. In order to go from the inverter to the breaker box itself, I have some four gauge THHN. I'm using four gauge wire. They do recommend two gauge wire if you're going to be using the 90 amp pass through, but I'm not. So four gauge will be sufficient. The electrical supply place near me only had black. As long as you label your wires with electrical tape to signify your two hots, your neutral and your ground, you'll be totally okay. So I have three conductors of the four gauge and one conductor of eight gauge. The eight gauge is gonna be our ground. The other three are gonna be our two hots and our neutral. I'm kind of just measuring out the wire right now, eyeballing how much I'm gonna need. And it's gonna go something like that. And then we'll still have a little bit of wiggle room to work with everything. Went ahead and 3D printed some conduit holders. And there we go. We got our main conduit to our distribution panel all done with our four gauge wire. And here's the main power coming out of the units. We have our lugs torqued to spec. The only thing I'm missing right here is the correct knockout to go from the three quarter inch conduit to whatever this size two inch. So I'm gonna have to either 3D print something to go there or buy the correct one, but I couldn't find the correct one at the store. So I'm gonna have to go back and add that later, but that's not a big deal. We can still get everything else done and going. I think so far it looks really good. I just got my first outlet box completely installed. That took forever. I'm gonna go ahead and start on the second one. That's what the wiring looks like so far. So each plug has its own 20 amp breaker. These plugs are rated at 20 amps. They have 12 two Romex going to them. So this plug has its own breaker. This one has its own breaker. And the reason I did that is because if I have a mini split here and a mini split here, each pulling, you know, a thousand watts, they're each gonna have their own circuit breaker. That way we don't overheat one circuit breaker running two plugs. This is probably gonna be the most time consuming part is getting all our outlets installed. So we're gonna have two there, an additional two on this side, a 240 plug, and then that's it. All the AC wiring for now should be done. The only other thing we gotta run, which I'm probably not gonna do in this video, is gonna be the back feed cable to run our panel, but I have to finish waiting on some equipment to get here to do that. That's what this large 6.3 cable is for, so we can backfeed our small load panel. But so far it's coming together pretty good. And we're also gonna be able to move these extension cords too once we're done, so that will clean up a lot nicer, I think. So we got one side, all the plugs done. That's how my wiring looks. Give me y'all's honest opinion. If it looks bad, I can take it. You won't hurt my feelings. But that's what we got so far, so we're gonna basically replicate that on the other side. And I think I'm gonna run the conduit up and over and back down. I wanna give as much headway above the unit as possible for airflow, I don't wanna block nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to this side and then all the AC wiring for now will be done. And I wanna to try to keep all the AC wiring on the top area, that way the bottom area right here, we have tons of space for battery cables, bus bars, battery racks, if we gotta build some sort of rack and all that good stuff. So everything looks good so far. We're keeping everything really clean at the bottom and all the wiring is very clean, very safe. It's just very tedious. Huge update, it's been a couple hours now, but I got pretty much all the AC wiring done. So we have our two fourplex outlets there, one here, and then I also installed a NEMA 1450 plug as well right here. That way we can power any sort of 240 volt appliance directly from the inverter itself if we want to. Next, we're gonna move on to the DC wiring. So I have two sets of really heavy duty bus bars. I think I'm gonna do a tandem bus bar setup because we have two inputs for the negative and two inputs for the positive. I really wanna make use of those and I'm gonna use two sets of really nice bus bars. These are 300 amp rated bus bars and that's it. So we're gonna get all that going and get these mounted. As far as mounting our batteries, I was originally building this cart right here to build the ultimate 12 volt solar setup and I actually had this project three quarters of the way done. That's why there's so many holes drilled at the top. I had a bunch of switches and an inverter and all kinds of things mounted this cart, but I figured this would work perfectly and it fits in that spot perfectly as well. And maybe we can put all our batteries on this little shelf I'm thinking maybe put the server racks on the bottom on the floor and then in the middle shelf we can put maybe the golf cart batteries or our eco-worthy batteries and then at the top we'll put the whatever we have left the uh, ying sing battery and pretty much anything else and i'll also leave some space in case we want to add batteries in the future so i'll have the batteries right there and then we also have the cow pack sitting under there and that should be enough capacity to run 
this whole system just for now. I'm gonna kind of build the DC bus bars based on this. So I'm gonna try to kind of mount everything in this little area right here. That way it's easy to access and service and all that good stuff. Okay, so I'm thinking two bus bars here, two bus bars here, and that'll still give us plenty of room to run our cables up into the input. And I think it'll look nice and clean and still give us tons of room to access wiring. And if we need to add any shunts or fuses or anything, we can definitely do that. and kind of something like that. We can always change it later on, but that'll work just for now. Next, I'm gonna take our two watt cage cable and start making some power cables to run there. And then I also need to buy another shunt. I did go ahead and finish all of our negative cables. So we have our cables attached here. They go through a little 3D printed little protector there and they come down and join together to our current shunt. I wasn't sure if I was gonna put two current shunts or just one, but I only have one, so we're gonna run one just for now. And then I took the remainder of the wire that we had left and I cut it in half perfectly. That way from the shunt, we have two even runs to go to each bus bar and they're both perfectly the same size and length. That way we don't have any issues with current sharing with one wire being more resistive than the other. So we're gonna get those guys thrown on. Then we just gotta make our two positive cables. And there we go, just like that, we have our two negative cables. I am gonna 3D print some nice stakes to hold the cables nice and tight against the wall. It does look a little strange having a lot of extra wire. It's totally okay. I want these both to be even and work really good. I also need to find a way to mount the shunt as well. Dang, this whole system's starting to come together. It's looking good. And this is taking all day. It may not seem like much, but I've been at this all day, getting this thing ready to go. Yeah, look at that, nice, heavy duty, all secure. I need to go back and retorque these to the proper torque spec that's in the manual. Everything fits nicely through one knockout. That's it, we have all our DC cables done. So they come out of the inverter and they evenly spread to the bus bars. All the cable links are correctly even to each other. So we shouldn't have any issues with current sharing. Look at them nice heat shrink crimps. I don't know what you guys think about that. All we gotta do now is add our batteries, put the panel cover on, that's gotta go on as well. I just have to knock out all the little spots for the breakers and this thing will be ready to make some power. We do still have to add the solar input, so what I'm gonna probably do is take the solar input and kinda come over here with it. Since all our wires for the solar are right here. All right, so in order to connect the batteries, we have these pigtails with these Anderson connectors and the reason I prefer using those is it makes pulling the batteries in and out of service really easily. I did go ahead and zip tie down the main connectors right there with these 3D printed little zip tie holders. So that all looks pretty good. I'm gonna get these thrown on and kind of lined up the way I want it and then we can start connecting some batteries to this thing. All right, so I got some of our inputs connected to the bus bar. So far we have three Anderson connector pigtails. I went ahead and plugged this into the Kalb battery pack and I went ahead and flipped the breaker on. Got our current chunk connected and let's see if we have power now. Okay, so it's on, everything's on and working and it's really amazing how quiet this thing actually is. None of the fans are running right now. The inverter's on, we're making power, all that good stuff. So that's really cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start laying the rest of our batteries out, get all the batteries connected up and we'll kind of wrap this up. It's the next day since the last clip I recorded, I went ahead and got the full system completely done. So our full brand new version two 48 volt off-grid solar power system is fully complete. Our Flexboss 21 is up and running like a champ. We got all of our batteries connected as well. So I have a total of 59 kilowatt hours of batteries at this moment. I also did get the back feed line connected to the feeder panel with a proper transfer switch and everything. So now the house, all the lights you see right now are completely off grid. Everything's off grid in the house. I've already ran the water heater and the dryer to see how much current they pull. And the highest I saw was about 5,500 watts. So that's gonna be no problem for the Flex Boss. Overall, I'm really happy with this. Hopefully it's a system that I can grow into a little bit more versus the 6,000 XP, which was really awesome, but it just didn't have as much horsepower as far as power that I needed. 
and this is definitely something I can grow into. I'm not gonna be anywhere near maxing this setup out anytime soon. The only thing that we really need to add to the system way later in the future is maybe more battery capacity, and that's really about it. Everything else about this is about as good as I could build it at this moment in time, and it's been running now for about a day, and I'm very happy to report that everything's been working really solid. The inverter itself is extremely quiet. The fans have never kicked on on this unit at all. Zero fan noise below a certain power level. I think it's about 6,000 or 6,500 watts when the fans actually kick on. But until that, the unit passively cools itself, which I've heard some people say these things run kind of hot. So I may end up putting my own set of fans on it later just to kind of help facilitate cooling. But as of right now, we're just gonna leave it alone and let it run how it wants to run. There is the mini split right here that's gonna also help keep it cool, so I'm not really worried about temperatures. Plus, it is mounted indoors. There's still a little bit of wiring that I gotta clean up, but overall, I'm pretty happy with how it all came out. Got plenty of battery storage. Got the cow packs down there hooked up as well. Got our power strips connected right there, so we can plug in all kinds of chargers and testing equipment and whatever. Serve rack batteries down there on the floor. We got the Eagle Worthy 280 amp hour batteries on the shelf itself. And then we have our Yingxing battery right here, doing its thing. Pretty cool. But overall guys, it was a fun project. I put a ton of love and, and a ton of work into this thing and I think it kind of shows everything came out really good. Bus bar wiring looks a lot better and a lot cleaner than my old setup, plus I can really expand. And as you guys can see, I've already added a good amount of wiring, but there's still plenty of room to service everything and test everything and keep up with it. So yeah. I guess that's gonna do it for the video, guys. Let me know what y'all think about my new upgraded solar. Let me know what you guys think about the new upgraded 40 volt solar power system that we built. And I'm open for suggestions in the comments. So if there's anything you guys think I should change on the system, drop a comment in the comment section and I'll go through and read them all. Let me know what you guys think. Honest opinions, good, bad, the ugly. I wanna hear all of it. Anyways, guys, if you're still watching this video at the end of the video and you're hearing this message, you guys are the real MVPs for watching my video through. Like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you guys think and I'll see y'all in the next video.